Uh, welcome back. Now, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Olaya Mikadosu, has said that for quite some time, there has been a dislocation of the monetary transmission mechanisms, rendering the MPC meetings largely ineffective. Now, Kadosa hinted that a new price management and stability framework that will lead to improvement in average living standards is underway. Now, the inflation management plan, soon to be unveiled by the Central Bank of Nigeria, is in conjunction with the Ministry of Finance and other relevant fiscal authorities. I have the principal partner, Woodridge and Scott Consultant, Shagun Shogwita, joining me now to discuss further on this development. Good morning to you, Shagun. All right, we seem to be having that issues. Having you. Okay, uh, thanks for staying with us, uh, Shagun. Okay, let us start uh, this way. There are lots of revelations and inroads made at the weekend by the Central Bank Governor, Yemi Kadoso, and he has said that uh, his predecessor, pumped 10 trillion naira into quasi interventionist activities that were not the areas of strength of the apex bank how do you reason this aberration what exactly went wrong okay uh, thanks for having me again um uh, the, the speech of the central bank governor the new central bank governor was quite interesting um it was extremely engaging and it was uh, something that you know everybody that plays in the financial sector would um, need to pull over and run through. Um, there was a lot of messaging. Um, and then there were also some things that were not said, but that, you know, that, that were kind of uh, alluded to, that it's important that the markets understand. Um, talking about, you know, the activities of the CBN prior to his assumption of this office, um, describing, um, um, you know, those activities as an aberration may not be entirely correct and and i am I'm, I'm a bit concerned at what appears to be um, an attempt to demonize the central bank you know we have to remember that the central bank is an institution it's not a person and the central bank of a country is the central bank of that country regardless of who the central bank of no might be um saying that the CBN went outside of its mandate, um, got distracted, you know, and all of those things may not necessarily be true. Um, so if you look at the things that the central bank was doing with a lot of the policies of the former CBN governor, I think he, he, a lot of his policy actions were a big problem for the economy. But I don't think one of those problems was the interventionist activities of the CBN. I think those activities were necessary, given the, where the Nigerian economy is today. Nigeria, the Nigerian economy is in a crisis. I mean, we have to recognize this. We're in an economic crisis, um, an economic crisis that can be um, likened to um, a situation of a country at war. It's, it's that serious. Inflation is out of control. Um, and ex exchange rates, volatility is out of control. You are having... 30% um, swings in the value of your currency within a matter of days, this is an aberration. There, there is no economy that can survive that kind of volatility, right? So when you, and these things have been in this, our situation for a while, when you run an economy in crisis, interventionist activities by central banks is not an aberration, it's not unusual. Um, and I can give you examples. During the COVID um, pandemic, 2000 and, uh, 2020 and 2021, all central banks across the entire world, the Federal Reserve, um, the, 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 the UK um, um, uh, Bank of England, um, the, the EU uh, central bank, um, the various country central banks did provide financial intervention programs to fund and boost development and growth. Because economies were suffering from potential um, uh, decline into recession on the back of the decline in economic activity during the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's one example. Central banks got directly involved in creating funds and providing those funds to households, mm -hmm. to businesses, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large corporations. The central banks in those countries provided that. You can go back as well to 2007, 2008, the global financial crisis. The central banks across the world 
provided bailout funds. You know, so this 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 thing that the CBN was doing under MFLA in the last three, four years, you know, the um, anchor borrower program, the various intervention funds to the aviation sector, to the energy sector, is, is nothing new. In fact, the Central Bank of Nigeria before MFLA 2010, I remember vividly, had um, a manufacturer sector intervention fund that was specifically targeted at medium-sized uh, manufacturing enterprises that had run into crisis and that had loans that were uh, crippling the banking sector. All right. The CBN provided intervention funds to bail those manufacturers out and then to help them revamp their, their businesses. So right. when a new CBN governor comes on board and then tries to create the impression that the, act, uh, the actions and the activities of the central bank prior to his assumption were, were abnormal, they were an aberration, they were distraction, you know, it, it's not true. It's not right. true at all. I, and, I, and I wonder what the objectives are. I think what we need to see is the central bank today providing policy direction for the entire economy, monetary and otherwise, to lift us out of the problems that we're seeing now, to curtail inflation as a matter of urgency, and to at the same time boost growth. Those two objectives are very difficult to balance, but they must do it. All right, Chegu, uh, let's still uh, examine some of the things that he said specifically concerning inflation and other macroeconomic uh, you know, indices. You know, the MPC meetings, he actually talked about that and the outcomes, and he said uh, that the outcomes have actually been largely ineffective over time. Right now, headline inflation has surged to 27.33% as that's uh, last month's figures. Now, Cardoso said the CBN was well aware of the damage inflation had caused to living conditions and businesses are showing that a new inflation a policy uh, would actually you know, be taken over time. I just want to get your reactions concerning you know, the, his statement concerning um, the outcomes of the MPC and how ineffective they have been. Yes, I, I agree with the central government now that you know, um, the MPC interventions via the traditional monetary policy rates um, instruments to try to manage inflation has been ineffective. And I've been saying this like a canary for the last one year. I've been asking the central, central bank to stop um, um, relating with inflation as though it was just a monetary policy issue, a money supply issue alone, because it's clearly not the case in Nigeria today. So yes, uh, the CBN government is absolutely correct that the MPC pronouncements have not you know, curtailed the inflation um, effectively over the years. Um, yeah, in, in the last 24 months or thereabouts, we've seen inflation continuing to increase month and month, except for December. So clearly something wasn't working. Um, so he's correct. Now, um, what will the solution to that be? I found it a bit um, curious and maybe worrisome that he did not provide a clear clear statement with regards to what is happening to the NPR or to the NPC um, in that speech. All he did say was that they are not holding the NPC meetings for two consecutive times now. is not in contravention of the law. Mm -hmm. So, But he did not say what would happen. Are they going to maintain the, the standard practice that we've had with our central banks of having NPC meetings every two months? as against once a quarter as provided by the law, and having it every two months as against once a quarter is obviously also not against the law. That was being done because the central bank realized that the interventions needed to happen more frequently than what the law provided. You know, but you said you are not breaking the law by not holding the NPC in September and by not holding it in November, but you have not told us when you will hold it. You know, and I think the markets need to have this information. Right. Um, so, so now, talking about the inflation, sorry, talking about the inflation management framework mm. that they're coming up with, the market will be waiting eagerly to get the breakdown of what that will con contain. Obviously, the NPR must be one of the um, components of that framework, but we would like to see what the other components would be that might um, now make the um, instrumentality of the NPR as a policy instrument um more effective we would we'll have to wait to see that and that's that's a good potentially it's a good pronouncement from him okay. but until we see the details we will not know exactly how it will work 
Okay, now going forward, uh, inadequate foreign exchange supply, depreciation of the exchange rate, limited external reserves, weakened output and high unemployment have pushed up interest rates, affected asset quality and solvency ratios in the banking sector. Now, Cardoso seems to believe that through targeted policies, in as much as you said that he's not aligned, transparent market operations and coordination between the monetary and the fiscal authorities, they, we can be assured of a more stable exchange rate, uh, control inflation, and also create an enabling environment for businesses and individuals to thrive. Do you agree? Okay, a whole lot was said uh, by the central. Yes, uh, can you hear okay. me? Please go ahead. Uh, did you get my question? Yes. Yes. Yeah, please I got your ahead. question. All right. Um, so, so, so basically, um, I found it quite curious that the Central Bank of Nigeria governor spoke about transparency and the importance of transparency to the functioning of the, especially the foreign exchange markets. All markets, whether they're foreign exchange, financial, um, capital markets, money markets, whatever kind of market that you're talking about that involves exchange of um, uh, value. Transparency and information flow are very critical components of ensuring that that market is efficient and is achieving its objectives. Um, so it's a good thing that the governor has said that. But what I found also quite curious is the central bank continues to um, push out information about happenings in the in the foreign exchange markets without providing adequate information to explain how it is happening. Mm. The how is as important as the act itself to ensure that market players can plan. They understand what is happening and why it is happening. So if the CBN says, for example, that backlogs are being cleared, you know, um, with, with, with banks, with the issue of forward contracts and, and all of that, and with the issue of maybe the airline uh, backlogs, if the CBN says on a week by week basis we're clearing these backlogs, I think it is absolutely critical mm. that the CBN provides the how because if you do not provide the how to the market, then they cannot independently right. determine what direction the market will go in. Uh, if the how is unsustainable, then the gains that we see in the price, in the, in the valuation of our currency will be temporary. And that will have very damaging effects in terms of long-term, medium-term and long-term planning for the players in the market. So yes, the CBN government is absolutely correct about transparency, but it needs to walk the talk and not just talk it alone. The, the CBN has been pumping out information without providing the basis of that information. Where is this liquidity coming from? All because right, we all know, you know, the market. All right, so the very yes, quickly, uh, for sake of time, now let's just uh, finalize yes. on um, the recapitalization. In 2004, commercial banks were asked to recapitalize from 2 billion to 25 billion naira. Remember the mergers, marriages of misfits and a whole lot of that that came out of all of that. Now, 19 years on, there are plans for banks to boost their capital base to meet with the expectations of a growing economy. I just want to quickly get your thoughts concerning this uh, recapitalization uh, for commercial banks. Well, I mean, look, if, if you want to grow your economy to a one trillion naira economy um, um, in about four or five years, uh, there is nothing wrong with saying that your financial systems must also be stronger, must develop the capital uh, capacity to, to, to fund and drive that growth. So asking for a recapitalization is not necessarily a bad thing. I think the, what would be very critical, like the CBO government has said, we have stability in the financial, in the banking sector in particular moment. What you don't want to do is to rock the boat. So whatever the approach, the implementation approach, approach for this capitalization exercise is very critical. Number one, you don't want to do it in a rushed manner. Number two, you want to allow um, the players in the industry to have a significant say in how they go about achieving this recapitalization. So regulation must provide guidance rather than compel action. Um, and I think if we do that, then we will definitely achieve uh, the gains that the CBN governor uh, spoke about and uh, we'll be trying to achieve. So any challenges on the part of the commercial bank themselves in terms of mergers, acquisitions, or any other um, ways that yeah. you want to go about that? Absolutely. You know, it's, um, capitalization would happen either by virtue of mergers, acquisitions, or by raising of new capital. Um, whichever one of those options that you look at, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Mm. Um, depending on the 
quantum of increase, the quantum of change that the CBN will be um, right. imposing on the banking industry, it might be easy and it might not be so easy. Um, what we would expect, we probably will be seeing some uh, some further consolidation in the, in the sector okay. as a result of this. Um, and, you know, I, I cannot, for the life of me, say anything wrong with that. I think that's good. I think stronger banks are okay. good to create a strong economy. Right. And um, hopefully, guidance would also be provided by the CBN okay. to ensure that that strength in the banking sector is transmitted down the bottom of the pyramid to the mm. poorest of the poor in the economy. All right, thank you so much, Shebo. We just have to let you go because we are completely out of time. Shebo Shokuto is the principal partner at Wood Regents Court Consulting. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin. The new business insight returns to your screen. Same time. Bye for now.